Mike Dell's World, number 169, for October 27th, Asylum Street Spankers, which I'm going to feature today on the podcast. Welcome aboard. I'm Mike, and this is Mike Dell's World, as I mentioned there before the song. Anyway, uh, let's see. Hey, I do have a, a new sponsor, and uh, yeah, I know I said I was going to not uh, take any sponsors, or at least not Citrix for the uh, for this quarter, but uh, had this opportunity to uh, to to take this new sponsor, and it's another podcaster, which is kind of weird, but uh, it's a it's a good podcast. Uh, you know, they're they're pretty short, and uh, they come weekly, and it's uh, Doctor Leonard Pickoff, and Doctor Pickoff is recognized as the world's foremost authority on Ayn Rand's philosophy of objectivism. 
And, you know, I've listened to quite a few of these and uh, not quite sure what I think of objectivism, but it is interesting. And I encourage you to go check it out. Uh, you know, uh, you know, objectivism is, is, you know, like Ayn Rand, she uh, authored the book, uh, was it Atlas Shrugged? And Dr. Peikoff is recognized as the uh, foremost authority on Ayn Rand's philosophy of objectivism. And in his podcast, he doesn't get into the political stuff, but uh, he tries to answer questions from real people submitted to his website every week. And uh, he uses objectivism as the foundation of his responses. And uh, it's, it's very cool. I've, I've subscribed and been listening, you know, I don't know, about a week or so since I found out about this uh, advertising campaign. And uh, like I said, not sure what I think about it yet, but uh, it is very interesting. And like I said, I think it'd be very cool. He does like four to six new questions every week uh, covering human relationships, career, morality, and uh, not current politics. Some recent questions include, is love more important than career? And can science answer everything? Is it proper to be competitive with one's friends? What's more dangerous, religion or socialism? Anyway, I encourage you to go check Dr. Peikoff's podcast out at www.peikoff.com or you can just click the banner at the top of mikedell.com. And uh, well, yeah, like I said, it's, it, it's definitely worth listening to whether you agree or disagree and uh, you know, only you can decide that for yourself. But, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it's definitely, uh, worth listening to. So, uh, go check that out and, uh, and, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty, uh, open to, uh, any sort of feedback here. Of course, you can always leave feedback for, uh, Mike Dell's world or any other podcasts that I do at Mike at Mike dot com. So anyway, uh, hey, we've been having an interesting couple of days here in uh, northern Michigan. Of course, if, uh, unless you're, you know, unless you're uh, uh, living off the grid, which if you're living off the grid, you're not listening to this. Uh, you've you've heard about the uh, big uh, storm in the Midwest. Uh, it's a big low pressure system. Uh, Around here, everybody's talking about it as the Edmund Fitzgerald storm. Uh, back in 75, uh, of course, the Edmund Fitzgerald went down in uh, Whitefish Bay in Lake Superior uh, during a, a uh, November gale. And, uh, of course, in the famous song, the, you know, the gales of November came early. Well, it was... November 10th, so, you know, I don't think that's so early, but, uh, you know, being uh, today is uh, October 27th, uh, a gale of that strength is a little bit early, if you want to call it a November gale. Uh, right now, the, the low pressure is over Duluth, actually probably a little bit east of Duluth by now, and uh, we got a big round of thunderstorms and tornado warnings and all kinds of crazy stuff yesterday. And uh, today it's just plain windy, and uh, it's it's always every year in the fall we end up with end up with a uh, rain slash wind event that uh, blows all the leaves out of the trees. You know, we go from peak color to uh, blank trees, <laughs> and it almost happens, you know, overnight. And uh, you know, same thing happened this uh, this time. Of course, in town here. A lot of our leaves are still on the trees because we don't get the uh, the heavy winds that everybody else has. But uh, here in northern Michigan, we've been getting, you know, 60-mile-an-hour winds off of Lake Michigan. I would say probably 40 here uh, where I'm at just because we're down in a valley. 
But uh, yeah, it's been fun to watch the media reports, uh, especially the local TV stations. Uh, you know, they're talking about the the apocalypse of the storm. You know, the, the and and really the the low pressure system. And you know, one of the local newscasters or weathercasters brought this up, and it's true. Uh, the pressure inside the storm dropped to you know 28 point something inches of mercury uh, i don't know what it is in millibars but uh, it's the equivalent of a category three hurricane <clears throat> the only difference is we don't get quite the winds that the hurricanes get because of ground fi friction and, uh, you know, of course, that slows the winds down. And then also we don't get, you know, definitely don't get the uh, rainfall amount because it's not over an ocean. You know, Lake Michigan's a big, you know, piece of water. And Lake Superior, Lake Huron, Lake Erie, Ontario, whatever, that's a big piece of water. But it's still nothing compared to the ocean. So, you know, we don't get nearly the uh, precipitation that a Category 3 hurricane would. but uh, it's still that strong of a storm. And, uh, you know, like I said, they, they kind of overhyped it as it was coming in. And, you know, we've had some power outages around town. I did my radio show last night. And uh, during the radio show, uh, according to uh, the meters that I see, uh, the actual transmitter cut down to low power a couple of times because the site that it's at the generator only provides about half power uh when uh you know when the uh main power goes out and and that happened a few times uh, during my two-hour show last night and of course i played some of these uh, asylum street spanker songs uh, during my show last last night <laughs> but i always like to you know point out weird music and all that Anyway, see, I'm getting off on another tangent here. But <laughs> anyway, well, I think I, I'm going to play another another song from uh, from the Asylum Street Spankers. Uh, this one is uh, called Hick Hop. And uh, I think I played another song called Hick Hop by another group. But uh, this one's definitely unique. And uh, we'll catch you on the other side. Got your car parked over in my pasture, you bastard. Move that sucker for I tow it with my pick em up, stick em up. Nobody move unless they wanna eat lead. I'll drill you a new one, dead to rights. Baby, better off cruising through the honky tonk. Hotter than the semen insurance, rattling in my glove box. 44 cold burning Smith and Wesson oil in my dry hole. Sold to the carpetbagger, swagger, and drunker than a junkyard. Monkey butters churning and turning like the motor in my vehicle, trucking down the road. See ya! Said hi, old silver. Whoa, trigger. I said hi, old silver. Whoa, trigger. Well, the next thing you know, old ginger millionaire. Come on back and talk to Teddy Bear. <laughs> yeah, right. I got my pedal the on the floor of my four wheel drive. I'm sliding down the highway. Cranking up the George Jones, you know. The race, race is, is on. on and I'm passing on the ride. Down over a lot of feet. Yeah, Crater in my heart. Then I call me an ambulance. Uh, don't forget to shake your boot. In the two step, come on and give me three steps. Hey, play some Skinner, man. Alright, shoot fire from my gun rack. Overdrive, tall boy. Cold in my cozy while I'm shifting into high gear. You an out snake skin side 
on the field. Well, the poke will be my skill until she screams and hollers like a pig on the poke. Hey, 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 I ain't joking, bizmatch. Cause I'm fly with my window rolling 57 flatbed board. Hey, baby, you need a ride. I said, hi, old Shelburne. Whoa, Trigger. I said, hi, old Shelburne. Whoa, Trigger. Well, the next thing you know, old Jet's a millionaire. I said, hi, old Jeff. Whoa, Trigger. I said, hi, old Silver. Whoa, Trigger. Well, the next thing you know, old Jeff's a millionaire. Get your ass back in the truck. And my trigger fingers twitching. So get your ass in the kitchen and a quit your yelling about rebellion and cut me an onion, a glass onion. <laughs> Cause I'm about to go helter skelter, you Beatles fans out there. <laughs> yeah, hang on a second, let me get my boots off and then work on your rocks there, sugar darling. Yeah, you know what I'm saying there? Cause we're hotter than two rats nickel in a wool sock. Ten four little beaver, we're going back on out of here and get ourselves a barley pop. Oh yeah! Silver. Whoa, I said hi, old Silver. Whoa, well, the next thing you know, old Jet's a millionaire. Come on, back and talk to Daddy Bear. I said hi, old Silver. Whoa, I said oh, Silver. Whoa, well, the next thing you know, old Jet's a millionaire. some more Skinner, man. You're listening to Mike on Mike Dell's World Podcast. Jeez, while that song was playing, uh, we had a couple of of uh, loud bangs, and uh, the lights dimmed a little bit, but thanks to the UPS, the uh, podcast kept going. So, hey, anyway, hey, uh, since I last talked to you, uh, been to Blog World out in Las Vegas. Uh, what was that held at the... Mandalay Bay uh, Casino and Resort there. Uh, went out there with the Blueberry slash Raw Voice crew. And uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, although, uh, well, well, two things I want to say about that is the Blog World Conference itself uh, definitely looked a lot better in a smaller venue. Uh, last year it was in the uh, Las Vegas Convention Center, which is an absolutely huge place. And it, it kind of got lost in there. Uh, you know, it was, it was, it was cool when you got there, but, uh, it, it seemed, you know, like a really small fish in a big pond at the, uh, Mandalay Bay Conference Center. It, uh, seemed a little more right-sized, uh, the whole, uh, Downstairs there at the uh, convention center was taken up by Blog World. And, uh, of course, we had a booth out in the uh, the uh, display area. And, uh, of course, I manned the booth uh, on and off uh, both Friday and Saturday. And, uh, like I said, that was a, a lot of fun and got to meet uh, a lot of people. And... Uh, like I said, it was a different mix of people than last year. Of course, uh, Trucker Tom didn't show up. Of course, uh, I knew that ahead of time. He he, he said he's uh, saving his money either for a trip to South Texas or, uh, or a trip to CES uh, in January. So uh, either way. And, uh, of course, my friend John, the, the ducky man, uh, didn't go. Uh, he was busy with some... Uh, television uh, engineering uh, he works for the uh, local NBC and ABC affiliates 
here in uh, northern Michigan and uh, got lots going on, so uh, he bowed out. But uh, my wife Kathy went uh, along with uh, the rest of the Raw Voice team, and we had a lot of a lot of good times. Uh, uh, went out to dinner at uh, what was that called? Uh, Red Square uh, there at Mandalay Bay. It's a Russian restaurant and uh, that was really good uh, had, I don't know probably 15 16 of us uh, in this little room but uh, that was a that was a great time and uh, great food and uh, all that good stuff I had a couple of VIPs with us uh, which uh, I'm not supposed to discuss so I won't but uh, <laughs> anyway and hey I have actually been to the Raw Voice corporate headquarters. Uh, of course, we uh, at Raw Voice have a, a headquarters uh, for our corporation, which is in Las Vegas. Uh, I'm not going to give you the exact address, but uh, anyway, uh, it's basically where our, our corporate headquarters is, and it's... You know, it's one of those lawyers' offices things since we're pretty much a virtual company, but it is incorporated in Las Vegas. And and uh, me, along with uh, Barry Kantz from uh, the uh, uh, Home Travel Agent podcast and uh, Angelo Mandato, who's our uh, head software geek and... Uh, and uh, host of the plugins cast and who else all went there uh, my wife Kathy uh, Brian Euchre from uh, Tech Heads uh, our uh, creative director was there and uh, his wife and like I said it was an old Barry's wife was there too and it was a lot of fun. We we took a lot of pictures, and uh, we're gonna do a little Photoshop. So. <laughs> but we actually found the the actual address of the uh, lawyer's office, which is our corporate address. And, and like I said, that was a lot of fun. We also got to go to the uh, Pawn Stars shop there, the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop, which ironically is about three blocks from our corporate headquarters address. And uh, that was uh, anticlimactic. Uh, it was it was cool, and you know, in the shop they had you know several of the items that were featured on the TV show. And in the parking lot, there was a couple of guys that rode in there on uh, OCC choppers. So uh, you know, we kind of got the overdose of reality television <laughs> at that place. And that was fun. And then then we went to downtown Las Vegas. Uh, uh, all of them had to catch airplanes. We didn't have to catch our airplane till the next morning. So uh, they all uh, they took the rental van back to the airport uh, to catch their planes. And uh, Kathy and I cabbed at home a few hours later, but not before we won back everything we spent. We're pretty much. Uh, actually, I think I came out about $100 a head on the whole trip. So that was cool. Uh there's my favorite place to play, uh, you know, to, to play blackjack and or craps. Uh, both of them uh, turned out pretty good is the oldest hotel in Las Vegas. It's the uh, Golden Gate. And it's down on the, uh, oh, the end of the Fremont Street experience, uh, kind of next to where that, uh, that neon cowboy sign is. And then... Uh, and across from Glitter Gulch, but uh, it's right downtown on Fremont Street, and uh, it's the oldest continually operating hotel casino in Las Vegas. And, uh, I think I'm going to stay there next time I go out there, uh, just because, uh, just because I can. <laughs> anyway, hey, I got one more song from the Asylum Street Spankers to play, and then. Uh, and then i uh, got a couple uh, other closing comments. I'm going to kind of keep this one short uh, this time. Uh, actually, I, I need to get to bed in about uh, 20 minutes or so. 
So hopefully uh, we can get this all uh, wrapped up and uploaded and all that good stuff uh, before I head off to bed. Otherwise, I'll upload it tonight. Uh, of course, uh, depending on when you're listening to it, you'll you'll know what, what I did. So anyway, uh, one more from the Asylum Street Spankers. Of course, I'll have a, a link to uh, their stuff in case you're interested. Uh, one, one cool thing, uh, this is off of a CD called uh, God's Favorite Sampler. They have another uh, CD out there called uh, God's Favorite Band. And uh, that's kind of a gospel, believe it or not. But the thing about the Asylum Street Spankers is most of their stuff isn't radio safe. And uh, we got these CDs in at the radio station, which is kind of an anomaly. Uh, because of their stuff not being radio safe most of the time. They're out of Austin, Texas. Uh, they've been featured on the Bob and Tom show, and they do do a little bit of touring, but uh, for the most part, they hang around Austin. And uh hoping to get to South by Southwest this year and uh, maybe go see them in person. But anyway, uh, these are the radio safe versions of, of some of these songs. And... Uh, like I said, if you uh, want to get the uh, full versions, along with a whole lot of other songs that uh, can't be played on radio, of course I could play them here if I had them, but I don't. So anyway, this one's uh, My Baby in the CIA. My baby in the CIA, you wouldn't believe half the shit that she say, all day in the conspiracy, and all night with me. Instead of high heels and halter tops, she's all false flags and special ops. She liked to shop for things that drop and pop, as cute as a killer can be. <laughs> we took a black helicopter off to see a flying saucer while digging in the desert last spring. Had a whole lot of fun in Area 51. It's where we go to hear the aliens sing And they sing just like this Shot JFK. Oh, she's much older, but that's okay. She got this secret technique that will induce you to say, Uncle! And sweet baby G! Oh, God. <laughs> she's so bad. Yeah, she's a running gun right behind my back. Selling arms to Iran. Selling arms to Iraq. Heck, in the 80s, she was slinging crack, all in the name of liberty. It's the Iran Contra affair, remember that? But talk of secret torture prisons, or ISI connections, or how she trained the Mujahideen. She'll just bring up the fun in Area 51. It's where we go to hear the aliens sing. And it's very distracting when you're. Telling you, Dennis Kucinich would love it. <laughs> my baby in the CIA, she's my undercover cover girl all the way. She's oiling up her engines for her auto if hey, yeah, she's spreading her democracy because she loves democracy and she'll stand for it every time. I mean, every time. Well, except for Ecuador, Brazil, Chile, oh, and I guess there was Iran back in 53. Oh, let me see, Guatemala, Indonesia, the Dominican Republic, Greece, Venezuela. They're all textbook examples of CIA-backed military coups of democratically elected governments. 
But I'm really worried about Brittany. What's going on with her? Can I get a little more coverage? Okay. Well, maybe we can get Huckabee to pray for her. Anyway. And when it comes to the attacks on the World Trade Towers, she knows I know she knows something. Because every time I ask a question about World Trade 7, I mean, why was the collapse of that building completely omitted from the 9-11 Commission report? It seems pretty important. <laughs> Suddenly there's the flash of bright white light. <laughs> and then I pass out. <laughs> then I experience extreme discomfort. In my rectum. <laughs> Do you, you like love songs, Charlie? That's enough discomfort, thank you. <laughs> and I wake up here in the alien sing. Well, so much for probing questions, right? Everybody sing along. I said everybody. That's better. Okay, not really. It's really creepy when you all do it. <laughs> And really, somebody should pass out the gum, too, if you don't mind. My baby in the CIA. I haven't seen her since the 5th of May. Cause she got spooked, and then she ran away. Boy, I really miss her chicken salads. <laughs> Oh, there she is! Hi, honey! Hey, hey. Charlie King, everybody! Nice. You know, it's kind of funny that uh, those aliens sound a lot like the leaf blower uh, from a couple of songs ago. <laughs> I digress. Wow. Uh, we had a little bit of a power outage there during uh, that track, so <laughs> I don't think I lost anything thanks to the UPS, but uh, it came back. So I think I'm going to cut this uh, a little bit short just because uh, I don't want to lose the rest of this recording. Of course, I won't lose it, but. Uh, uh, don't want to not be able to get it saved right. Anyway, uh, what was it? Uh, there was one, one more thing I wanted to bring up, but uh, life me, I can't figure out what it was. But anyway, it's been uh, Mike Dell's World Podcast for uh, for today, number 169. And hopefully I'll uh, get, you know, get another one out uh, next week. It's, uh, what is it, Wednesday here? Uh, yeah, heck, I might get get another one out uh, by Friday. Who knows? But I got to do a Geek of the North tomorrow, and hopefully we'll do a uh, So You Want a Podcast podcast. Hmm, that doesn't sound right. Hopefully we'll do one of those uh Either uh, Friday or Saturday. Uh, what's up with that? By the way, is is back. Uh, so go check that out at what's up with that or what's up podcast dot com. However you want to spell it, uh, we got both spellings: one p or two. And uh, did one of those. Of course, uh, go check out uh, this week. Or no, wait a minute, it's not that. It's Aviation History this week over at FlightRadio.com. Uh, also uh, been uh, doing those. Uh, got three in the can and uh, and uh, one more uh, that'll come out on Monday. Uh, hopefully I'll keep that on a weekly schedule. <laughs> Sometimes I bite off more than I can chew, you know. Uh Got uh, too many uh, podcast irons in the fire here, but, uh, you know, always uh, come back to uh, Mike Dell's world at some point. And, of course, the uh, Mike Dell Unplugged feed. Uh, 
who knows, uh, sometimes this one gets more and sometimes that one gets more, but uh, you can find all of it over at MikeDell.com. Don't forget to visit my sponsor, uh, Leonard Peekoff, Dr. Leonard Peekoff. Uh, click the banner there at the top of uh, MikeDell.com and you'll find all that over there. And uh, here, let me, uh, let me let... Uh, Keith, uh, tell you about the uh, Blueberry Network. This podcast is part of the Blueberry Network. Find other fine podcasts at www.blubrry.com. That's Blueberry with no E's. And, uh, of course, if you go over to Blueberry, you can find all kinds of cool podcasts. If you got a Roku box, a Boxy box, a you name it, any set-top box, you can uh, listen to my podcast, watch the Mike Dell video feed over there, although there's not a lot there yet, along with a lot of other video stuff. If you uh, get on Roku and find the Blueberry app or the Tech Podcast app. Uh, anyway, oh, enough pimping. Hey, by the way, uh, one, one more thing. Uh, Mike James uh from Mike Thinks News and Thinks Media, came out of uh, semi-retirement. Now, maybe it's not retirement, but uh, anyway, the Mike Thinks News podcast is active again, and I was very happy to hear that and listen to it. So go check him out over at thinksmedia.com. And, uh, hey, we'll uh, catch you next time on Mike Dell's world next one's 170 come on we got to we got to get to 200 before the end of the year so uh that's going to that's going to involve me uh, doing a lot of podcasting but that's all right uh, i need a i need a goal to hit maybe we won't hit 200 this podcast is part Whoa. of the blueberry network wait a minute hit the wrong button there <laughs> thanks keith again anyway <laughs> Maybe we won't hit 200 before the end of the year, but uh, should hit 200. Maybe uh, January 25th would be a good day for uh, the 200th episode of Mike Dell's World. But we'll see. Uh, like I said, not on a strict schedule here, but uh, definitely want to keep you guys uh, informed and entertained. Hopefully uh, both, but you never know. Anyway, catch uh, me uh, later. That's all, folks.